thinking of you and thinking of your education and making sure that you've got all the material at you to access. That's what that's why I'm recording the notes. To make it helpful for you. All right. So, types of clouds. Yesterday we talked about cloud formation. Today we're going to talk about the types of the clouds and the different kinds of clouds. So, clouds are based on um, the different types of clouds are clouds are condensation that are formed in the air, and the way that the clouds are formed are based on like their height and the wind patterns and the type of moisture that they're carrying. Um, the temperature that is in the air. And so there are several different names that are given to the clouds. Um, stratus, cumulus, and cirrus are the main forms of clouds. So here are just a couple of the different types of clouds. And we see all of these here in Missouri. Um, these are the ones you're going to see more often, like with a storm coming in. These are more on bright, sunny, kind of windy days. And then these big puffy like cotton ball clouds, those are on nice sunny days. Um, usually like in summertime you're going to see those. So stratus, cumulus, and cirrus clouds. You just gave Liz like all the diapers. Yeah, I don't know. Did you do it on my crab? Huh? I think, well, because like I said, they like unintentionally trained Liz to go on paper. Well, you don't have to write this on paper. I mean, you should be taking notes at some point on computer or on paper. I'm kind of like back up.
the placement or the method that it's formed. Fog typically is formed by um, some type of water source. We get a lot of fog around this area because we have a lot of water around this area. When I lived in Garden City, we didn't often have a lot of fog because we didn't have a lot of water. But because of our location near the Missouri River, we get a lot of fog off of the river. Um, also, we have a lot of ponds and um, not so much lakes around here, but we do have a lot of ponds in this area. Yeah, that helps too. And any kind of water source or body of water is going to give us some good fog. Since I commute to from Boonville, I drive over the Missouri River every day. We get some good fog off that river a lot of mornings. I'm sorry. I was listening to Mark here, and we have in volume. Um, if a droplet from the cloud falls, they usually fall incredibly slow and most of it evaporates. So when you have um, like snow falling, for instance, sometimes if it's really high up in the air, it'll fall as snow, but then as it falls as snow, it's going to actually melt as it's falling and turn into rain. Um, that's a lot of times because it'll hit a warm air patch and it'll melt as it's falling. Now, it'll, a lot of times, even when it's raining, as it's falling, it's got a long ways to fall, and that droplet will start off really big, and a lot of it will evaporate as it's falling, and it'll turn into a smaller droplet as it hits the surface. So there's a lot going on from when that water leaves the cloud to when it actually hits the surface of the earth. So the lot is changing. So a lot changes from the precipitation leaving the cloud to hitting the surface. The 
picture at the bottom kind of shows a good visual. For snow to form, it has, it has to stay cold for a while. Um, sometimes the snow can form, and if it hits a warm patch, it might melt a little bit, and then it can kind of reform if there's another cold patch toward the ground and form back into snow. That's also what may cause like sleet or hail or something like that. Hail, of course, is big pieces of ice. So that is if it's just coming out of the cloud completely as ice and it doesn't have time to melt before it gets to the ground. <laughs> so usually they call it precipitation because precipitation is any type of moisture that falls from the sky. Snow, sleet, hail, rain, whatever. That's moisture falling from the sky. that reaches the Earth's surface depends on the temperature in the lowest few kilometers of the atmosphere, so the surface of the Earth. So right now, if it's cold, then that's going to depend on, that's going to help determine what actually hits the surface. So if we had rain up above, then we're not as likely to have rain hit the surface if it's like 20 degrees here. It's more likely to be snow at this point. So on a hot summer day, there may be snow high above, but it would turn into rain closer to the surface because it would melt. Yeah, it's the only newspaper I really get at my house. That's the only thing I can line for pages. This is just showing kind of how it works with the different temperatures and how the precipitation forms, um, the updrafts and the droplets and how the droplets, once they um, condense in the cloud, they get too heavy and they fall out of the cloud. And as they're falling out, they start to um, lose some of that density and start to evaporate a little bit. And by the time they reach the surface, they're actually smaller than when they left the cloud. This picture again is pretty good. If there is a warm patch of air, they leave the cloud as snow, but if it's close to, if the temperature on the surface is cold, then it can reach the surface and be snow. If they go through the warm patch, it could turn into sleet or freezing rain, or if it's warm at the surface, it could turn into complete rain. So rain and snow are the most common forms of precipitation. You can get drizzle, which is really, really, really small rain that's falling slowly. Sleet is a frozen rain and snow mixture, and hail is like ice balls, which usually occurs during just very violent thunderstorms. Hail begins as snowflakes that starts to melt, and then as it gathers moisture as it falls, it kind of freezes again.
But again, all of these are forms of precipitation. If it is moisture leaving a cloud, it's called precipitation.